Uh, I am back with a new video. Um, I am desperately trying to get this YouTube channel published so that I can attempt to um, reach some of you out there who might be about to have your surgery similar to mine and you're looking for answers and information, tips and tricks. And uh, I'm finding I don't have time for making a YouTube channel. So again, I'm just trying to squeeze these videos in when I have a few minutes. Um, today's topic is going to be tips and tricks that helped me get through my first few weeks after my surgery. So these are going to be random in no order. Um, and if I can insert a couple of photos of products, um, if I can figure out a way to do that, as I've said, I'm not very tech savvy. I am going to try, but, um, all right. The number one thing that I have to suggest, if you have the super pubic catheter as I did, um, which, is I think going to be pretty standard protocol after any TVT or mid urethral sling for incontinence. Um, you are going to want to have a bath robe string on hand. So like any bath robe, you know, just the string that you use to tie the robe on. Um, I realized really quickly after my surgery, when I attempted to take my first shower, that the super pubic catheter just hanging there dangling down because of gravity is really uncomfortable. So I was looking around my bathroom, like what can I use to help hold this up so that I can actually have both hands free in the shower to wash myself and do what I need to do. Uh, so I just used a black robe string that I had and I would tie it around my waist um, pretty tightly, just like, like you're tying your shoe, just tie it in a bow. And then I would tuck the super pubic catheter tube up underneath the, you know, the rope around my waist and that held it up. And that was amazing for allowing me to be comfortable in the shower. And then you just take the robe off, squeeze it out and, you know, hang it back over to the shower for the, to dry for the next time. Obviously you could wash it in the washing machine if you wanted, but mine was, I figured getting washed in the shower. So anyway, tip, that's tip number one. Another super pubic catheter tip would be, um, that especially my first three days or so. I don't know if it was the anesthesia, if it was just that everything going on was just grossing me out. But um, in the beginning, it takes a very long time for all of your urine to drain out using the super pubic catheter. So you like unplug the little um, plug or cap that's on your tube and then you're supposed to just stand there and drain it into the toilet. Well, I would get very tired. It would take minutes to drain all of the urine out of my bladder. And I would also get very dizzy for whatever reason. I got lightheaded, dizzy, could have been the pain meds. I don't know. But I found that um, using a pitcher, like, uh, like a drink pitcher you would pour a drink from, um, helped me with that process. I just found a pitcher. We actually have a tea maker at our house and I used the pitcher from that, really gross, I know. Um, but I would just put it on the floor in front of the toilet and then I was able to sit down, unplug the catheter and then just sit and drain that into the toilet bowl. Or sorry, sit in as the urine drained out of the catheter, it would just drain into the bucket and then I would dump the bucket into the toilet and obviously then I would rinse the bucket um, in my bathtub or whatever. So that was huge in just alleviating the need to stand up that whole time, making it more comfortable for me to just sit and wait for it to drain. And then also, you know, when you're just standing like several feet above a toilet bowl, draining this catheter tube, it's just messy and it splatters. It was just a total mess. It was much easier to do it in the bucket. So that's tip number two about that catheter. Um, I would say, Tip number three is that toward the end of my nine days of having it, um, the tip of the catheter tube started to get stretched out. And so then when I would put the plug in it, uh, I would fully plug it up. But what I found is sometimes the plug was coming out and just then I would find myself soaking wet because it was draining on its own because the little plug had fallen out because the tube gets stretched out. I don't know that there is a way to prevent that stretching out. Um, 
I made a phone call to my doctor's office and you know they were like yeah that happens towards the end sometimes um they said people sometimes take a binder clip and like close it up they you know they said you could use a paper clip to fold it over and then clip it um I would just suggest if at all possible to try not to um jam your plug way down into the piping because then obviously I think that's going to increase the amount of or increase the likelihood that it's going to stretch out and how quickly it stretches out so just plug it as much as necessary and not shove it way down in there until as it as it starts to stretch with time then you would be able to push the plug down in there further so that's just a little tip I learned um a couple other things are about pillows so get yourself a um not too thick pillow that you can use for a couple of things. First of all, it was way more comfortable for me to sleep at night with a pillow between my legs. Even if you are never a pillow sleeper, um, just, you know, the pressure of your two legs being together puts more pressure on that area. Um, and it just felt way more comfortable to have a pillow between which kept my legs then separated. So it wasn't putting all that pressure right here. Um, yeah, so get yourself a pillow to sleep with. And then you can either use that same one or get another one to keep in the main level of your house where your dining room is, like where you typically eat your meals. Because I tried to eat with my family at our kitchen table as much as possible. I was not able to the first couple days, but by day three or four, um, if I sat on a pillow, and we already had padded chairs, but it just wasn't comfortable enough. So I would put a pillow down and then sit on top of that and that allowed me to eat with my family. Um, another huge thing was I ate most of my meals on my couch or even in my bed with one of those tray table things. I ordered one on Amazon for like maybe 20 bucks and then I sold it after my surgery. But you know, just a foldable tray table for eating your meals. That way you don't have to get up off the couch or out of bed every time that you need to eat something. So that was helpful. Um, I made use of a heating pad frequently. Um, I don't know that I was supposed to, and maybe this made things worse. Maybe this caused some of my UTIs. I guess I'll never know. But I would like wad that heating pad up between my legs down there and like, it felt so good. <laughs> um, so I don't know. It, I think if it makes you feel better, it's worth a try. Nobody ever told me the heating pad shouldn't be used, but then again, nobody ever told me that I should use it. And then it felt very good on my stomach, like um, just where all of the girl parts that were removed were as well. So then it also felt good on my back. So have a heating pad around. I definitely recommend that. Um, I have a shower that has a detachable shower head and if you've got the finances to do that before your surgery, I think you would really like having that for a couple of reasons. Um, it felt really good down there during the recovery phase to spray that down there. It just made me feel cleaner. Um, I read a lot of things about how warm water in that area promotes healing, promotes circulation, um, blood flow to that area. So when I would stand in the shower, I would just take the shower head and, um, you know, clean myself and spray that area but also I had been given this tip and trick from someone else I knew who had had the surgery and she said that when you go to remove your packing your vaginal packing that using the shower head to like you're gonna have one hand with the shower head spraying that area and the other hand is going to be slowly tugging and pulling that packing out she said it just helped to lubricate things it helped to kind of like I don't know, almost like numb the sensation of it coming out because you're focusing on the warm water being sprayed down there. Either way, I did it and I think it definitely helped and I am glad that I had that type of shower head. So again, like as you're removing the packing, keep a the shower head spraying on that area as the other hand is pulling. Um, it's an uncomfortable process no matter how you do it, but I will say that as I pulled, any discomfort I felt was also like at the same time relief because as you're pulling that packing out you automatically are feeling like a, re a relief of pressure it's just like oh this is a little uncomfortable and definitely a weird sensation um because at least for me i had about 10 feet of packing in there like 
I don't know how long they spent putting that up in there, but it just kept coming out and coming out, coming out 10 feet of it. So you will see it afterwards and you will <laughs> seriously wonder how that ever was in there. But you will also say, wow, that's why I was so uncomfortable. And you will feel like a million bucks once that stuff is out. It's immediately like, oh, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. But the shower head, I think, helped. Um, this is going to be in my tips and tricks or sorry, my product video also, but I recommend having some good old handy tux pads on hand, just like after having a baby and use them for the exact same thing. And then again, back to having a baby, they give you that lovely squirt bottle, the peri bottle. Well, I didn't have a peri bottle laying around anymore. I had thrown those away after my last baby and hoped I would never see one again, but lo and behold, I needed one. So I sent my husband out to the Dollar General to buy, um, a two pack of a mustard and ketchup squirt bottle. They work exactly the same. So I kept like the ketchup bottle in my bathroom upstairs and the mustard bottle in my bathroom downstairs. And every time I went to the bathroom, I would fill that thing with warm water and, um, you know, I would gently wipe and then I would also squirt that area like crazy. And again, it felt better. It made me feel cleaner. I think it helped prevent infection as long as you're squirting front to back. So that's another tip I have for you. Um, I think that's about all the major tips I have for you. You're going to do things that are going to make you comfortable and that's what you need to do. I mean, whatever gets you through that first 10 days to two weeks is what you got to do. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be in pain. You're going to have things pop up like I did, like hemorrhoids and, um, everything else, I guess. One last tip and trick would be, um, I state this kind of in my overview video, but I am about 10 months post-surgery now and still on the recovery end of some um, hemorrhoid and fissure and just anal issues. And although I did this and it didn't fully prevent it, I would highly suggest that you take your stool softeners longer than the prescription allows, like start buying them over the counter. Um, or, you know, there's some people who don't suggest long-term stool softener use. So definitely some Metamucil, some fiber supplement, like whatever is going to keep things soft is going to be more comfortable for you. Hopefully prevent any kind of fissure. That's something that I have struggled with since my first pregnancy, 12, almost 13 years ago. So I don't necessarily know that the fissures were from the surgery, but the hemorrhoids were. Um, so anything you can do to try to prevent hemorrhoids, constipation, anything like that would be another tip and trick that I have for you. And other than that, like I've said in a previous video, trust yourself, trust your body. Don't let a nurse tell you something is normal if you don't feel like it is. Even if they are knowledgeable, obviously they are, they've never been through what you've been through. And so they can't tell you what feels normal, what smells normal, what looks normal, what is normal. Um, trust your instinct, trust your gut if something doesn't feel right. I definitely learned that through this process. So, okay, that's my tips and tricks video.